the pattern. Anything that needs to be done has to be done through prayer. And when there are agreements that, oh, uh, that's why we see that God is telling us in, uh, you know, Peter, in his, God, uh, in his epistle telling husbands and wives that you have to agree together to do things. But when you agree, your wife doesn't agree, or your wives agree and you don't agree, then things, the prayer you offer won't uh, be uh, happening. So we should realize that this is what is happening. And so uh, husbands apply intimidation, and it's also considered witchcraft. And so they want to be critical. They want to be this. They want to uh, do this, and then they shout on their uh, children, on their friends, and all that, and use bad language. Those are intimidation. When we are using such languages, we have to be careful that any language that we use, which is not a positive language, it is putting a... Well, I don't need to use the word, but it's a language that we should not use. And uh, for example, uh, you know, let me, I can use this word. Some people will call their children and say that, you know, you, you are this thing, you are stubborn. You know, by using that word on your child, on your anyone, you are pronouncing. Remember, God says about the mouth, we have to use words that will encourage that will help. But if we use any word that is negative against any person, we are cursing that person and we are pronouncing a curse on that person. Every word we say, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable uh, to you. So we should always be using positive words or words that will encourage. Even sometimes you know that you can uh, say something, the person may not be here, and you say, oh, you this person, this is a stubborn, uh, you know, all this, and all, you know, you are, you are this, you are this, you know, you are, all things that people say, we have to remember that we shouldn't be using any of those because those words are dominating. You are dominating that person with your words. You are intimidating them with your words, and you are manipulating them. So let us remove these things from our conversations because we may think that, oh, I'm not doing it, but domination, manipulation, intimidation, it exists. And it is part of all the characteristics that I just read. And I'm not reading Galatians 5.19 because uh, we may find it uh, too long because we already know uh, what it means there. So please let us remember what it means. We can have a dominating spirit without realizing it. If everything that has been uh, and given to us in God's word is that we should encourage one another, because sometimes we think we uh, are not doing it, but in James, the epistle, uh, okay, let's go back to first, let's read the uh, Revelation 21, it says, but the cowardly, that's one. That's, uh, you know, somebody who uh, has a spirit of coward, cowardice. You know, they are coward. Unbelieving, that's two. Abominable, they treat God's uh, word, everything about God. Murderous, sexual immorality, sorceress. You see, sorceress involves so many things, and we are using it in various ways that we don't even know. Why do we have to consult someone to tell us about something? We depend about the weather man. We depend about, oh, it's going to rain this week. It's going to be this thing. That's, why, why do we have to be uh, going into the future? Of course, uh, the world of today, they want, they want all their calendars to reflect what they are going to do this week, next week, next year, and they have all this, and they say it's going to rain today, it's going to rain tomorrow, and they are predicting what's going to happen. When we as Christians have the power of prayer to go before God and allow God to do what we want, rather we leave it to them. We leave it to the world to tell us uh, what it's going to be. We should be the ones to tell them. So sorcerers and then idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone. So we see that anyone who is practicing 
anything that is uh, not consistent to God's word uh, is going to be uh, finding themselves in the, the place that uh, they don't want to be. All right? And so in a society or in a community, in a family uh, where there are issues, problems, like, uh, for example, when we have uh, arguments and it becomes a little bit uh, hot or tense, and then we use such, uh, such languages that are not helpful. And those words, uh, according to God's word, it comes from, the de uh, from demons because those things are not something that we should be saying. So if anybody is using any language which is uh, uh, not right words, they are all demonic words. So James 3, 13 to 16 uh, says, uh, I will read that to help us know uh, what... Saying and uh, hopefully we'll uh, conclude it soon. I'm not going to do a bit. It's just something we all should know. All right, James 3... And I also want to pay, pay attention to the word demonic. It's in the Bible. It's what the God is telling us. All right, so James 3, 13 to 16 says, Who is a wise man and endued, endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation, his works with meekness of wisdom. 14. But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not, and be not against the truth, which means don't, don't uh, tell a lie, or don't be against a lie. 15. This wisdom descended not from above, not from heaven, but is earthly, sensual, or uh, in the King James it says devilish. All right? In another translation in the King James, it's called demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. So what we are talking about, the last uh, word that we are using here is devilish. The last word in verse 15, it says demonic, is the same as satanic or luciferian. In the King James, we have it devilish. In the Amplified Bible, it says demoniacal. In the Living Bible, it says inspired by the devil. In the J.B. Phillips translation, it's called disharmony and all other kinds of evil. And in the modern English version Bible, it says uh, unspiritual and devilish. Which of us here today can refute this evil label in the church. And so as we appeal to all of us, let us not use any words that will create problems in any uh, of us or to anyone, any family, because those words are not something that we should be using. We shouldn't be dominating. We shouldn't be intimidating. We shouldn't be manipulating. In verse 17 and 18 of the same uh, third chapter, it says, But the wisdom that is from above, the other one was from below, this is from above, is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy good uh, and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. And so, let us remember again as we continue with what we are talking about that when any of us have any inkling, anything, any hint that uh, we are operating in a way that is uh, against God's word. You know? Sometimes we don't think about it. We think, oh no, I'm not doing that. But let us remember that wherever we are doing things on our own, Without the cooperation of your spouse, then it means you are doing it 
on your own. And by doing it on your own, there's no blessing in it. The two of you are not connected. The two of you are not going uh, to enjoy the blessings because uh, Peter has already given us the warning. And so we need to ask God to help us so that as we uh, interact, as we have relationship with one another, we do not use any of these actions in our life. And so the actions that I also mentioned that any action in any one of us, if it is something that we can stop, then we are good because in the Bible, the Apostle Paul told us that we are to mortify the body. So any action that we have, which is a problem to us, for example, uh, let's see, if you like to eat too much and you can control yourself, then you have mortified, you have controlled your body, but if, or you control yourself. But if it's something that you cannot control, then you are being filled with a spirit of what do you call it? Whatever name you want to call it. Uh, so that's one example. So anything else that we are involved with, if we are filled with always hatred, anger, and all that, that's the spirit of the devil. And so may God help us so that we realize the need for us to act accordingly so that we will not have the spirit of domination, the spirit of uh, intimidation, or the spirit of manipulation. And if we have it, we can always go to God and say, Lord, Please forgive me because uh, God says we are to fear him. When we fear him, when we realize that we have done something that is not consistent, then we are to go to God and he will give us uh, the healing that we need so that we can act and do all the things that we need to do and then uh, be able to receive God's uh, approval to do all the things that we need to do. So again, what we need is to act and be able to produce the fruit of the Spirit. Again, we can see that the Spirit has fruit, uh, and the fruit that the Spirit will give us is all in Galatians. It's there. It is also in other parts of uh, uh, the Bible, but God wants us to produce the fruit of the Spirit. And when we are being uh, led by the Spirit, we act in the Spirit, we can all have uh, the Holy Spirit guiding us in every way. But when we allow the devil to take control, then the devil will treat us mercilessly and we end up in the wrong place that we do not want to be. We thank God for what he has brought to our attention and pray that as we continue to thank God for all that he has done for us, for our brothers, our sisters, our loved ones, we we'll all continue uh, to look to him for all the necessary blessings that uh, we need. We uh, also mentioned last month that we need to also be praying for all of our brothers in all locations, uh, all the locations that we know they exist. So uh, anything about any brother or sister in any part of the world, uh, not only in Ghana, in Nigeria, in Togo, or uh, in the U.S., but anywhere where a Christian exists, we have to be praying for them because some of them are really undergoing a lot of persecutions and we should be praying for them. There are people, uh, brothers and sisters, who don't have uh, work to be done. Uh, they are out of job, and some people have issues, uh, family issues, and so many different issues. We have to pray for our children, pray for their prosperity, pray that they will not be indoctrinated in anywhere they might be, uh, be, whether in school or in any society, in any community, and that they will not be involved with all those things that seem to capture them and make them want to be part of the world. God wants us to be transformed. We have to be transformed in any part of our lives that we are transformed to the Spirit of God. When we are transformed in the image and in every way that God has said, then we are already receiving all the transforming power from the Holy Spirit, and then we can say that, yes, truly we are Christian. If we are truly Christians, then we look at all the things that are, are hindering our progress. We are Christian, all right, but then we act in some ways that, oh, yes, what is it? Christmas, we are celebrating. In the Bible, we do not see anywhere where Christians were uh, being encouraged to celebrate Christmas. We have already been, uh, we know, in Ghana, the church, none of them celebrate Christmas. In Nigeria, they don't. But here, we seem to be part of it. We are all involved, uh, involving ourselves. Oh, let us be part of it. Let us do it because everybody is doing it. No. Let us not be guided by what the world is doing. Let us do what 
we know God's word has said. If we want to be involved with things of the world, well, the Bible has told us, let us be unique. We are all peculiar people. Here, we've been called, called to be separate, called to live lives that when you look at them, you can say that, well, I want to be uh, in this group. But when we cannot introduce ourselves to people, encourage them, tell them about what we do, what we know, what Christ has done for us, how we have been blessed by God's word, by God's relationship to us, by what Christ has done for us, then how do they know about us? Of course, we know in the past, we've always said, we don't do this, we don't do that, we don't do that. Those are not helpful. We have to be able to tell people that, yes, I'm a Christian because God has saved me from this and I have a future and Christ has some uh, pleased giving me a mansion. You know, we have the, same, the hymns, we sing the, uh, the, uh, the hymn and all that. So let us proclaim, let us become evangelists. Evangelists meaning that we are able to share the gospel to anyone who asks us that, oh, are you a Christian? Yes, and this is why I believe uh, Christ. This is why I, I know. We see videos of other people proclaiming Christianity. The Muslim, when they become Christians, they are so passionate. They are doing it in, without any fear. But we, we can't. Oh, I'm afraid I, I'm going to let people know that I'm a Christian. Uh, they will think that I am this, I am that. Why do we do that? We are not even bold. We go amongst people. We can't even act to show one principle that about us. For example, we come to church. We have our hairs covered. Fine, good. We go to other churches. They are not, their hairs are not covered. And we say, oh, their hairs are not covered. So if I cover my hair, they, then it will, make it, it will make me look different. I will be different. Oh, so if by covering your head here, you are, you, are, you are different here. But over there, you are not going to be different over there. We have to look at God's way. We have to be a Christian here, a Christian there, a Christian in any way, so that if in the future God, God uh, won't let, let this happen, okay, if we find ourselves in a place where everybody has been arrested, you are all in this place, and what, are we going to just be quiet and say, that? oh, I'm just going to be quiet in my uh, little place? We have to be what did Paul and Silas say? What did they do? They started singing. Can we sing in public? No. People, somebody will hear my voice. Even here, can we sing? No. Somebody will hear me sing a discord. It doesn't matter. We are singing praises to God. And so, please, as we prepare ourselves to go into a new year, let us not worry about resolutions. Those things are not what God wants. God wants us to transform ourselves. Transform. Prepare ourselves. Christ may come anytime. And so if we are Christian, true Christian, we know we are Christian, but we have, we have allowed the world, the flesh, and the devil, the loss of the eye, the, all these pride things that we see. We want to be conformed to the world, and these things are not helpful. So may the Lord help us so that we see the need of what we need to do, our Christian responsibilities, so that God will give us the necessary blessings. And as we kneel down, I'm going to